Hi, folks. I promise this is actually going to be a tease. All right, let's see it. We got good stuff coming up next. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Bill Fairman, Jonathan Davis, Wendy Sweet in the middle. That would be me. Uh, this is the Real Estate Investor Show. Thank you so much for joining us. We are the Real Estate Investor Show, hard money for real estate investors. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors only. Uh, we We're make loans in the Southeast. <laughs> Because we love real estate hey, investing. investors. <laughs> if you're interested in borrowing money, go to our website, carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, then click on the investor tab. And that would be the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Did I mention we were Carolina Capital Management? You no, did. I did not. Did you mention that we work with investors? No. If you are investing and you would like to invest with us or someone else that we know that invests, please invest your time with us. That would be a that would be a all right. Well I'm so Wednesdays fully with, invested in the show. <laughs> Wednesdays with Wendy is really booking up. I did block out a couple of weeks in December and the you know, Christmas and New Year's. All right. So it's like mid January. So if you want to get in, you gotta you got a book now because I'm booked through mid-January. I've got got people waiting, and and I'd love to I'd, I'd love to be able to talk to you too. Yes, uh, Wendy does donate thirty minutes per person mm -hmm. of her time on Wednesdays to talk about anything real estate. So uh, click the Calendly link and book your time right away. I'm speaking to six people a day, so that's a that's a lot of people to nice. cover. A lot of good stuff. I, I get so much out of it; it's just unbelievable. So this month, the month of November, we are uh, going to be doing shows and it's all about women, women in real estate. Chicks. Unfortunately, we were going at masterminds. <laughs> Wendy was at one and then Jonathan and I was at another the, the following week. So we don't have any women for this show today. Well, what about well, me? What am I, chopped liver? You're not. You're a host. You're not what? a guest. I'm a hostess. Okay, host. <laughs> So, but the rest of the month is going to be dedicated to women in real estate, except for Thursday of Thanksgiving. Mm. Um, our, we, we have wow. other strong women that would be very upset if we didn't show up for Thanksgiving. We, yeah, our mother's pretty strong woman. We, I can't believe we're already in the Thanksgiving month. Boy, yeah. oh boy, did this pop up quick. Yes. And, and just to clarify, we don't believe that women should be appreciated in just one month throughout the year. Amen. In real estate. There you go. It's a your yeah. wife must be watching. <laughs> <laughs> she might be. I don't know. But no, you know we Good job, we, we celebrate year round, and and we want to uh, want everyone to know that, and um, we're excited about women in real estate. <laughs> I'm always. always excited about. Hey. Women. <laughs> You're always excited about. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. This Easy. is what's so cool PG. about real estate is there is no gender, there is no race. Yeah. In real estate, you you that's what's so wonderful about this business. There's no gender, there's no race, there's no glass ceiling. Um anybody has the opportunity to be successful. But in there this are business. steel roofs. Steel roofs. <laughs> there's you yeah, I know you had to throw something in there, but that was good. That was it. I mean, it's a great business for for true equality. There's it's it's based on your skills. And uh, that's what I love so much about this business. So yeah, absolutely. And share. even if you're a dummy, you can make money in this market. Unfortunately, there's plenty of money. Yeah. <laughs> we try to avoid them. All right. Oh, <laughs> yep. Wife was watching. She said, go, go star Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, let's get to some uh, breaking news, if you don't mind. So this week's 30-year fixed rate has actually gone down a little bit. It's down to 
It was down like what from three, last week. It was three point one four. Yeah, percent. I was gonna say it didn't go down much. Ooh, saving hey, a half a penny on listen, that puppy. It, that's it's still <laughs> it's still lower than it was pre-pandemic. Oh yeah, um, mm-hmm. that's amazing. So while <clears throat> affordability is still an issue uh, with the rise in prices, um, you know rates are pretty low, so it's kind of offsetting uh, a lot of that stuff. Um, here's a uh, all right. So let, let's talk about rents. According to Redfin, uh, nope, I'm going to housing sales. Sorry. (laughs) According according to Redfin, a third of homes that went under contract sold with, or or, sold in the first week. I'm sorry, no. A third of homes listed uh, went under contract in the first seven days. Yep. That's pretty strong. Uh, yeah, that's that's really strong. And, and that gives you an indication of the limited inventory that's out there. As, as soon as you put these things up there. And just so everyone knows, that isn't due to Zillow's uh, debacled algorithm. Yeah, which I'm really excited <laughs> to talk about a little bit later yeah. on. Yeah. I, I, I love to see things selling quickly. I've actually just closed on a home that I've owned for 21 years yesterday, closed on it yesterday. I had it as an Airbnb and you drink to that. Uh, yeah. I've got my, my hot tea cause it's a cold day. I've got to have hot tea. Um, yeah. 21 years. I had that house, had it as an Airbnb, a successful short-term rental, very successful short-term rental, but it had gone up so high in value that I had to take the cash and run. Yeah. So I'm doing my first 1031 exchange. I'm excited about that too. Excellent. We'll have to do a show on 1031s and yeah. how they fun, work. Fun fact about 1031s, you're really not, you know, they weren't made for people to use. They were made for uh, corporations using industrial buildings. That, really? was the, that was the true intent of them. Of course, Jonathan would know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks good for the goose. That's right. <laughs> I'd be able exactly to take right. advantage of the, the tax rules that the government puts out. Right. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I brought that up is because that house you know, I, I had an offer on that house within 12 hours. Wow. That's not the one I accepted. The one I accepted <laughs> was actually a week later. And um, I'm really, it's just amazing the amount of people that went through that house. I'll bet you in the first seven days, I'll bet you I had 30 showings. Now, did you get an over asking price offer? I did not. You did not. You I t- did not. You took the asking I, price I, offer. I, yeah. And, and, and I'm, I was good with that because to me, I didn't, I was surprised well, it sold it, for what it sold for in the first it place. A little higher than you thought. I anyway. did, yeah. I did, but uh, yeah, it it worked out great. The appraisal came in no problems, and mm-hmm. um, and that's another thing that people have to worry about when they're pricing these houses. At you know to try and 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 work with that one third under contract uh, within the first seven days, you've got to price it right for it to sell because things mm-hmm. are chilling just a tad. Yes. Um, not dropping, just chilling. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, they're they're just not as fast or as hot as it was. Right. You know, it's like it's like turning your oven down from 400 degrees to, to 350. It's still hot. Yeah. <laughs> well, active listings as well are down 21 percent from 2020. That's an interesting. Yes. Again, limited inventory. Yeah. Active listings yeah. Now. However, this thing was Zillow. Where they've decided to get out of the fix and flip. Ten business. thousand houses. They're so, dumping. um, but here's the benefit that you're going to see from that. You're going to have move-in ready homes mm-hmm. that people have now. They've been competing with Zillow to buy. Uh, they're not going to have that issue now because Zillow isn't going to just put these out on the market. They're going to. You you don't sell seven thousand houses. It's actually ninety eight hundred. Okay, you don't sell ninety eight hundred yeah. at once. Well, the first, you, the first tranche is 7,000 for 2.8 billion. Okay. Yeah. You're going to sell those to institutional <laughs> crazy. investors. So the good news is you're going to have a lot of homes or if you're a first time home buyer and you're trying to find a home, you're not competing with the institutional buyers because they're going to be buying up these homes from Zillow. First. Hopefully, hopefully. I mean, that there's a lot of them. Zillow paid like, I mean, they were offering 20% over retail, which is nuts. Yeah. And, and they were going in and fixing them up after that. So they yeah. were really, really off on the numbers that they were working with, which is kind of crazy. And, you know, this is a common sense show. That's a perfect example of not using common sense in, well, in what you're doing. It, right? They had lots of cash 
and they are a marketing company first and foremost. Right. And they decided to get into the fix and flip business. And I would imagine their acquisition managers, people buying the houses, were all probably untrained, brand new, um, sure or they, sure sitting they, on a load of cash going, hey, we can pay whatever we want, right? I'm sure they weren't, you know, commission based off of <laughs> right put under contract. Right. Or well, open door pays <laughs> probably more not than, more, more than book two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's, there's, so, you know, talk well, about, well, they all do. Well, I talk about, you know, was happening in my my neighborhood a lot so my neighbor's house got you know closes with zillow here in the next a week or so um but then wonder if they'll go through with it we'll see um hmm. and then a few houses down another neighbor they listed their house for even more <laughs> and and they got a one on the first day they got a cash offer of over asking price from a company that's going to uh basically um do a um, like lease option purchase. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh. Well, they make interesting on the, mm -hmm. on the financing <laughs> on the, part. And that's yeah. the way to do it. That's yeah. a, that's a wise move actually. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's good. let's talk about rents now. Rents are up 16.4% since January of 2021. That's, that's in a year, yeah. one year. Well, we were wondering why rents were kind of stagnant for a while. Well, they're not anymore. <laughs> Like everything else, they're going up. Yeah. But keep in mind that, you know, real estate is local. We all know that. Yeah. If you're in California, they're not really going up. There's nowhere else to go. Well, they're going down, they're actually. As up as yeah, they they're, they're actually coming down significantly. So let's uh, <laughs> take a look at some underlying numbers. You've got 22 <laughs> of the 100 largest cities saw rents fall in October. From so, the previous month. Yes. And, you know, we're still seeing some folks moving out of the some areas. Cities, yeah. So, it, like I said, 22 out of the 100 largest markets saw rents fall. That's because people are moving to some smaller markets. Tampa, for example, rents are up an astonishing 36%, 36 percent. compared goodness. to March of 2020. That's and huge. then the largest rent decreases since March of 2020 were in San Francisco and Oakland, California. San Francisco is down 12 percent mm, and wow. Oakland is down 8 percent. The poop police are going to be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot but, about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. By the way, I want to thank Randy Vetter for uh, forwarding this information yeah, to me. He's great about doing that. You know, it's for funny, us. funny, too, about... Um, the rent situation, um, we are seeing a, a huge change in what's going on in the rent. And I can't help but question that, you know, you got to say Airbnb is a huge craze right now. Like mm -hmm. everybody knows about it. In fact, when I was in uh, Lowe's yesterday, I had to buy some some things for an Airbnb that that I'm, I'm almost done with. And I was telling him what it was for. And he said, Airbnb, what? What A R what 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 is that? And I couldn't believe he You're had like, not you heard live of under it. A rock? That's what I said to him. Um, and so I explained him to him the concept, and he was amazed. But he's like the first guy I've met in a very long time that had not heard of short-term rental properties, uh, because everybody's every, everybody's getting into it. It's like a new craze. Everybody wants to try it. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that isn't putting a dent into rental properties availability at this point. Well, especially the nicer ones. Well, sure. I mean, but, and that's that's also attributable to some of the prices being bid up because when you're when you're looking at a three x potential margin on a house, no, and just you should never buy a rental property based full, on based, based off of the short term rental you should always buy a rental right. or a short term long term whatever based off the long term rent potential that's common sense that's common sense so <laughs> by the way did i mention today is national common sense oh i don't yeah. know well that's cool so <laughs> every day should be for most people that's for sure um but yeah so you have these people buying on you know they're getting aggressive on these margins mm -hmm. it's like well i can make four thousand dollars a month right you can and i'm like okay so if i do that then i you know i can i can basically have uh i can you know have a eight cap if i bid up twenty thousand dollars over asking most of them won't understand what you just said so <laughs> <laughs> 
yield, <laughs> cash on cash yield. Uh, I'll make more money. <laughs> yeah, you will make more money. Um, well, you'll make you'll make n- not as much, but you're thinking it's going to be an acceptable amount because okay, eight percent sounds decent, right? But you have to make that money first. Yeah. And so yeah. What, what Jonathan is saying is you can overpay for those homes because you can get more money for them. However. Um, you always want that exit strategy. What if the Airbnb doesn't work out? What are you going to do then? What if your right? city changes their laws and that's will true. not allow it? And that's happening all over. What now, if you're in a neighborhood and the HOA changes, changes it? Just that's a, right. Like just as simple as an HOA can change that's that. That's exactly right. And do you think that uh, Hilton and uh, Hyatt and Marriott and well, they're getting those, into it. Those types of folks uh, don't have a larger lobby than mom and pops they, they, they have do a little bit but, of money but they but they also no, own I, airbnb properties yeah I, no, yeah and i get short that. term i should say but most of those properties are going to be higher end mm-hmm. uh you know yeah spa like properties right. whereas um the, the rest of the group are, are going to be lobbying the municipalities to make sure that they don't allow it close to their hotel right <laughs> um, one last thing here on. I'm sorry. And, and did we t- did we tell everyone that they removed the uh, IRA language from? Oh yeah, that's that's, that's kind that's of big in- stuff. Important. <laughs> All right, let me finish this, and then we'll get to that. Yeah, sure. Bill. All right. Last thing on rents is that uh, vacancy index has ticked up for the second straight month. So we're getting a little bit more or higher vacancy rates in the last last two months uh, than previous. But that said, we're currently at 4.1% vacancy. And in uh, March of 2020, we were, actually it was April, we were up to 7.1. Yeah, I was going to say. So it went down quite a bit. Now it's starting to tick. What was it? Up. Pre-pandemic averages about 6%. So it's still yeah. even low, you yeah, know, it's below still, that. Yeah. It's still pretty low. Yeah. Well, I think too, uh, once the moratorium got cut off and, in a lot of places. And it's going to be a little bit different in class of property. So sure. a class C property uh, may have a little bit uh, higher vacancy. Class B is going to have the lowest. And then class A is going to have uh, higher vacancy. probably the highest. Right. Because they're yeah. more expensive. And since everything else has gotten more expensive, it's going to be even tougher. cost me 90 bucks to fill my car up yesterday. $90. Well, that's what you get for I a, mine up having a bus. Nine, oh, 98 <laughs> 95 is what it wow that's your truck right that's my truck unbelievable and uh this time what a year year and a half ago 60 bucks i know that's yeah. what's it's that's scary yeah. but you know we can only ask opec to keep you know producing more you know we wouldn't want to get it ourselves out of our own country would we <laughs> It only cost Sorry, me forty dollars to fill up my truck, but it was half full when I started. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so let's uh, let's. All right, so let's talk about uh, the IRA. Yeah. Language. So last Thursday, big success. They took all that IRA language out of the uh, new bill. So yay! Yeah, we're really and, and for about people that. who weren't familiar, they had introduced IRA language that mostly targeted self-directed IRAs. Right. Um, disqualifying them from being considered accredited if the person who owns the IRA or is the benefit beneficiary of the IRA is accredited. So they were trying to take that away, which they removed that. And our, we were talking with John Heyer um, at, our, at our last mastermind. And basically he was like, they had to educate all of these teach them what IRAs even Cause, were because half of them didn't even know what an IRA yeah, was. That's, yeah. that's what uh, Jeff Watson said. Uh, yeah. And, and we need to thank Jeff Watson, John Heyer, Bob repass. They had a whole group of, of hardcore investors and they're in all different types of investing, but mm-hmm. they went to Washington, mm-hmm. sat down in front of the senators and I mean, they took a week out of their life. They actually took a lot more than that because they were working behind the scenes as well. But right. they they really sacrificed for all of us investors to go in there and and um, lobby for us yeah. and, and make sure that that self-directed IRA stuff was taken out mm-hmm. of that bill. I mean, there are companies, Quest, Camaplan, American, uh, American IRA. IRA. There's so many rocket dollars, so many no. good IRA companies out there that would have been seriously hurt 
um, not to mention the, us, individ yeah, the individuals. Yeah. yeah. Regular, yeah. you know, Joe well, Smith, we've well, been mean, in trouble. Think about how many funds, like accredited funds there are in the nation. I wouldn't even know where to begin to, to, to enumerate how many there are, but that have self-directed IRA that money have, in it. that have self-directed IRA money in them. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, so it's probably, I mean, it has to be thousands and it could be tens of yeah. thousands. And I don't all know. of that would have had to be emptied out. So, it was yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah, you would have taken billions of dollars out of the real estate business. Business. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's how we survive. That's, that's how this business rolls. If we didn't have self-directed money, uh, whether it's IRA, HSA, ESA, um, what, I know there's one more, um, I forget, I forget what it is now, but if we didn't have self-direct money to work with, we would be so far behind where we are now because sure. the lending would not be in the situation that it's in, having non-qualified lenders and funds and REITs and oh, yeah. all anybody other than government backed loans. Well, I mean, the, the thing is it's, it's the, it's the pure uh, freedom to, to invest how you want to, to direct that investment and build and maintain your own wealth and right. not put it in someone else's hands because you, because there's no other option. That's right. Like that's, that's the beauty of what a self-directed IRA is. It allows you to control and manage your financial freedom. Because you do have the common sense to make a right decision. Absolutely. And that's what government doesn't believe is that. Um, well, what, what uh, it drives me absolutely up the wall. It's like you have to be a creditor. You know, people are too dumb to use self-directed IRAs because, the, you know, they might lose money. Okay. Can anyone... Raise your hand if you've ever lost money in the stock market. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. What's the, I don't, do and you have to be way, accredited to go? With, security going? Yeah, like, do you have to be accredited <laughs> to invest in the stock market? That's no. right. So, I, like, I'm like, hmm, strange. That's right. That's right. It's it's just, you well, know, it didn't surprise me that the government uh, folks didn't know uh, about the self directed retirement account because there's only 5% of the population knows about them either. So it, it's amazing. And it, it's, it's not knows about them, that 5% that has have them. Well, they've heard of self-directed uh, IRAs, but <clears throat> there's a big misnomer. Uh, most people have a self-directed IRA. They, they have it with a stock manager and that person says, here's five stocks you can invest in. That you're, <laughs> yeah. That's your self-directed. Yeah. Yeah. Pick yeah. which one do you, yeah. <laughs> which one do you want? Yeah. <laughs> But people invest in self-directed retirement accounts because they have the ability to invest in stuff they know. That's yeah. right. And most everyone that has a retirement account, I would say, especially a self-directed, own a home. Yeah. yeah. And they know about real estate. Yeah. We need to get Quincy on a show uh, very shortly and have him talk about self-directed <coughs> or, he or, or Nathan or Derek from, from Quest. Get them to talk about self-directed you know we're still money. in the breaking news portion of sorry. the show. Well, <laughs> sorry. It's important stuff. Yeah, well, we it's have, really good stuff. We have five It's broken minutes. news. <clears throat> Actually, we need to wrap it up. Yeah. We're at the end. Well, so do you want to do the common sense walkthrough of a deal on no. another show? Yeah, we'll, we'll do, do that another time. All right. I've been overruled. And since <laughs> it's all about women, she is the, I'm still the boss. She's the boss. <laughs> well... Common sense is invest with women. Like, <laughs> That's right. do that because here's the like, you know, so often we all think we, you know, men, women, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. We think we have the right answers, but it's always beneficial to get a different opinion, mm -hmm. an outsider's opinion, or someone else's perspective and to help you through with an investment scenario. I run, you know, all of mine by my wife. I also, Speak to Wendy about it. Like, hey, what do you think about this? And sometimes it's like, oh, that's a great idea. Sometimes it's like, sounds pretty dumb, Jonathan. So, <laughs> you know, we, we need uh, we need people to be those sounding boards. So just don't discount people just based off their gender. Because yeah. Wendy knows far more than Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's been verified and recorded. <laughs> I don't know if it's been verified, but it's been recorded. <laughs> um. And, and this is why we go to these masterminds all the time, because we are always looking and it doesn't have to be a real estate mastermind. Uh, it's just masterminds on business, masterminds on marketing. Oh yeah. We, we always 
benefit from an opinion that's outside of your industry that's or right. your group. That's right. Uh, you can always learn. All right, folks. Sorry we rambled on about the breaking news and never got to our common sense deal. It was all common sense. But yeah, yeah uh, so what I was going to say, this whole show is about uh, common sense, which we don't have enough of. <laughs> Maybe you don't. So thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. This is hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast for, guess what? Real estate investors. That's right. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the Apply Now tab. If you're an accredited or a passive investor looking for passive returns, go to the Accredited Investor tab and click that on. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, and sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. And we'll see uh, you we got soon, a show right? coming up in 30 minutes. I think we might have a link for that coming up here in just oh, yeah, a second. There. If not, it's over there in the site. There, it's there. It there. Uh, join us on that one. We're going to celebrate National Men Make Dinner uh, Day. I have so many thoughts about that. I have so many thoughts about that. See you next time. I'll see you guys later.